So in this video I want to do two things. Firstly, I want to see how the product rule follows from our definition of a derivative and for brevity I'm often going to be using the shorthand notation that I can write the derivative of a function as f dash of x. So, and then having done that, having seen how we can obtain this, I want to talk about how this can be generalized to products of say three, four or more functions. So, what I want to do is to take this product of functions, f times g, and we're going to be differentiating it using our definition of a derivative as a limiting procedure. So what we're going to have is that d by dx of the product of f of x times g of x is going to be equal to the limit as delta goes to zero all over delta. Now here what we're differentiating is f of x times g of x. This is our new function. So from our definition, we have to write the product evaluated at x plus delta. So that means we have f evaluated at x plus delta times g also evaluated at x plus delta. And then we subtract the product evaluated at x, as it says to do here. So this is times f of x times g of x. So all we've done here is we've taken our definition and we've used it to rewrite the derivative of f of x times g of x. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make some room and then I'm going to try to manipulate this side here to use our derivatives of individual functions to express this in a way which will give us the product rule. So let's look at the right hand side of this equation and if we do that we see here that we can't immediately express this in terms of our derivative here initially. So I would like perhaps to say that we have f of x plus delta minus f of x but here we see that this f of x plus delta is multiplied by g at evaluated x plus delta whereas f of x is multiplied by g evaluated at x. And if I want to use our derivative, I need to have this multiplied by a common factor. So the way that I could perhaps try to do that is to add and subtract the terms I need and then see what happens to those terms. So I'm going to take this, write out the right-hand side and add and subtract some terms. So what I'm going to get is well, I have the limit as delta approaches zero, all over delta. Now, I have f of x plus delta, and I would like to now subtract f of x from it and multiply it by g of x plus delta. And if I do that, that's rather nice, because I recognize that this ratio here, f of x plus delta minus f of x over delta, the limit of that if it exists, is the derivative of the function f. So in that case, I'm multiplying it by g of x plus delta as delta goes to zero. That will give me g of x. So that's lovely. That's the first term in the product rule. It's the derivative of f multiplied by g. So let's see. I've had to add a term here. Well, I've subtracted it. So I'm going to have to add it again. So I'm going to have to add plus f of x times g of x plus delta. And now let's not forget, in this term here we have minus f of x g of x. So f of x is here, so I can just put in brackets and then say here I have minus g of x. Close a big bracket. And now if I look at this, I should be very happy because here I have f of x multiplied as delta approaches zero by this ratio here and that is from the definition if I just replace f by g this is going to be the derivative of g so let me pause and make some room so as we've said this in the limit as delta goes to zero is going to give me the derivative of f multiplied by g evaluated at x and this term here is going to give me the derivative of g, that's what this ratio is here, 
multiplied by f. So in that sense what we're doing is we're splitting this up into two fractions, this fraction here and this fraction here. And what we get from this is the derivative of f, f dash of x, multiplied by g of x, plus f of x, multiplied by the derivative of g, g dash of x, and the right-hand side is just the derivative, the left-hand side, sorry, is the derivative of f of x times g of x. And that is a derivation of the product rule. So we see that we're able to obtain the product rule from our definition. We look at the definition here, we insert f of x times g of x into it, and then we recognize that we couldn't immediately use it, but by adding and subtracting terms into the numerator, we were able to write something which is going to give us the derivative of f from our definition, multiplied by g, and then what we find is that the other terms, the term we had to add to get rid of the term that we've subtracted, goes together with the other term that was in the numerator to give us the derivative of g, and that is how we obtain the product rule of differentiation. So on the next page, what I want to do is to talk about how this is generalized to looking at products of three, four, or more functions. So a moment ago, we've seen how the product rule of differentiation follows from the definition of a derivative. What I now want to do is to ask the question, how would we generalize this from going from a product of two functions to a product of, say, three functions? Do we need to go back to the derivative definition and start again? And the answer I'm pleased to say is that no, we don't. What we can do is we can use just this product rule and a little bit of thought to write it out much more generally. So, consider the following. Let's look at this definition, uh, this derivative of a product of three functions. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let g of x times h of x be equal to a new function. I'm just going to give it a name. I can always do that. And I'm going to call it w of x. I just want to use a different letter. And if I do that, this means that the derivative of f of x times g of x times h of x is equal to the derivative of f of x times w of x. And now if I look at that, I can see that in terms of my functions f and w, I have got just a product of two functions, and I can use the product rule. So let me pause, make this a bit smaller, and then we will use the product rule to differentiate this, and then think about what w is. So, from the product rule, as written up here, but replacing g by w, what we have is the derivative of f multiplied by w, plus f multiplied by the derivative of w. Now, we know already what w is. We've defined it to be g times h. So here I have f dash, the derivative of f, multiplied by g, multiplied by h of x. And then here I have f of x multiplied by now, w dash is the derivative with respect to x of w, and what was w again? It was g of x times h of x. So at this stage we see that all we have here is the product rule for a product of two functions, and the functions are g of x times h of x. So we replace f here by g, and we replace up here wherever there's a g, we replace it by h. So I'm going to make this a bit smaller and write it out. So this means that we're going to have f dash of x, derivative with respect to x of f, times g of x times h of x, plus 
and then we have f of x multiplied by, and from the product rule for the product of two functions, we have these two terms here, and they're both multiplied by f of x outside, let's not forget that. So for the first one we have f of x times the derivative of g multiplied by h, so that is g dash of x times h of x plus f of x, remember it's multiplying everything, and now from the product rule we have the second function multiplied by the derivative of the third function here, so this is going to be g of x times h dash of x. So what we see is that if we look at the structure here, we're differentiating the product of three functions, and we have the derivative of the first function multiplied by the second multiplied by the third, plus the first function multiplied by the derivative of the second multiplied by the third function, plus the first function multiplied by the second multiplied by the derivative of the third function. So what I'm going to do is to make this a little bit smaller and to write down both sides. So if we're differentiating a product of three functions, what we see is we get three terms and we just write out the product three times and then we, in the first term we differentiate the first function in the second term we differentiate the second function, in the third term we differentiate the third function. If we were to have a product of say four functions, there would be four terms, and in the first term you differentiate the first function, in the second term you differentiate the second, in the third term the third, and in the fourth term you would differentiate the fourth and final term. So I think it's good practice in each case to write the functions out in the order that you have them in the original product and then just to write out the derivative at the right place in each term. That way it's easy to keep control of what you're doing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go on to a new side and I'm going to write out there an example and let's have a look at that. So here is the example. We want to differentiate with respect to x the product of x cubed multiplied by the sine of x multiplied by e to the x multiplied by the logarithm of the modulus of 1 plus x. And what I suggest you do now is you pause the video, calculate the derivative, and then, having done that, let's compare notes. OK, so when we look at this, we see that there are four terms in the product, which depend upon x. Each one of them we're going to differentiate in turn and multiply by all of the other ones. So let's start off with the very first one. So the first term is x cubed, and the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. And this is multiplied by all the other terms. So it's multiplied by the sine of x, it's multiplied by e to the x, and it's multiplied by the log of the modulus of 1 plus x. The next term we have is the sine of x, and that's going to be multiplied by the first term, so we just leave it there, x cubed, and the derivative of sine is the cosine, so the cosine of x, multiplied by the other terms, e to the x, and the logarithm of the modulus of 1 plus x. Now we've got two more terms to calculate, so let me write them out. Um, the next term in our product of four terms is e to the x, so we multiply it by the first two terms, so this is plus x cubed sine of x, they are unchanged. The derivative of e to the x is of course just e to the x, and then we multiply it by the logarithm of the modulus of 1 plus x. And then we have got our fourth term to differentiate. So we have the first three terms unchanged, x cubed times the sine of x times e to the x. And then using the chain rule, the derivative of the logarithm of 1 plus x is 1 over the argument of the modulus. So that's 1 over 1 plus x. And then we have to differentiate 1 plus x with respect to x 
and that just gives us 1. So that is our result. At this stage one could look for common factors to extract perhaps. Um, there aren't a great many. Um, if we look at this there is a factor of x squared which is common to everything. There is a factor of e to the x which is common to everything and that is it. So if we want to tidy this up a little bit we could say that this is going to be equal to x squared e to the x multiplied by so in the first term there is 3 sine x times the logarithm, the modulus of 1 plus x, plus from the second term there's still a power of x because of the x cubed factor here, times a cosine of x times the logarithm of the modulus of 1 plus x, and then from the third term there's another factor of x because of the x cubed factor here. There is again a sine of x and a logarithm of the modulus of 1 plus x plus from the last term there is a factor of x again and a sine of x multiplied by 1 over 1 plus x. And let's close the brackets. And if we look at this, we see that actually two of the terms inside here look very similar, here and here, but we can't put them together because this has a 3 in front of it and this has an x. Here there is a cosine, so you can't combine them. Here again there is an x sine x, but this isn't multiplied by a logarithm, it's multiplied by 1 over 1 plus x. So I don't think that can be very sensibly simplified. So I'm going to leave it at this and what we've seen is that if you have a product of say four terms here you're going to get four terms and we just have to differentiate them. We just look at the first term, we differentiate it, multiply it by the rest. We then take the first term, multiply it by the derivative of the second term, multiply it by the third and the fourth. That gave us this, etc, etc. So we can differentiate products of arbitrary numbers of functions using such patterns, and I'll stop this video here.